Hi, digital media students. This is Mr. Roper back for part two of our video series on creating an animated character with vector art. Um, this is where I left off in the last video. Uh, you can see I've added a couple things here, uh, including a beard shape and some eyebrows for my character. I also dropped in some ears, and I'm just going to pull this part. Uh, these parts off just so you can see how I made them. The ears are actually just perfect little ellipses, same color skin tone. And what I did is I moved them into place here and then went to right click, arrange, send to the back. So they're all the way at the bottom of the stack of shapes and they look like they're just connected to the head there. Um, for the hair piece, uh, you saw me create this last time. This is still like a little removable. Uh, to pay I can drop right on top of him and I did something similar for the beard you can see the shape that I made for the beard here uh, is one big piece that I can put into place and then send backwards until it's underneath the teeth the tongue and the mouth so to do that I just right clicked on the beard and I did a range and I sent it backwards one step at a time using this shortcut, control, and then the down arrow on my keyboard. And I just kept pressing that until it went back behind the mouth and looked like it was in a believable place. Okay? So what I wanna do in this next video here is add a few more details to make my character uh, really come to life and have a little bit more visual interest. Uh, I also wanna add some accessories. Uh, part of your task this week is to create some accessories that go along with your character and show their personality. So I thought what I'd do is start on his shirt. I'm gonna zoom in here and I'm gonna draw the collar uh, for the shirt in here using some shape tools. I'll take my pen and I'm gonna just create a little triangular collar here. I'll have it go up to the top and come down here. And that's gonna be one side of my shirt collar. Uh, I wanted to have the same color as the shirt, so I'm gonna choose my um, eyedropper and click on the color of the shirt. And then I'm gonna duplicate this by holding down Alt dragging a copy over here to the left and then I'm going to right click it and go to transform flip horizontal so that it's facing the opposite way now and I can just move this back into place where it belongs okay uh, I probably want to connect these two parts of the collar too so I'm going to take my pen and I'm going to go one two three just to connect those together and that's pretty good for the shirt. Maybe I'll add the little button line straight down the middle like this, okay? So now I've got all the parts of the shirt collar. Well, I'm gonna group these together. So I've got the line, I hold down shift on my keyboard and I click on each part of the shirt. So both collars and the V there. And then I'm gonna right click and say group selection. And this is gonna create one group out of all those pieces so that when I move one, they all move together. I can kind of put this where it belongs. And again, I'll send it back behind the beard here. I'm gonna right click, arrange, send backwards. And then on my keyboard, I'll just keep pressing that. Control, down arrow. And you can see it's dropping back until it goes underneath the shirt. Perfect, okay. Uh, let's give him a little shirt pocket as well. I'm going to take the rectangle tool this time and I'm going to draw a little rectangular pocket there. I'll use my eyedropper to select the gray and I'm going to do a little trick here with my pen if they'll let me. I'm going to add, oh maybe not, just kidding. Let's give this an outline though so we can see it. I'm going to go to borders make sure that this shape has an outline to it. There we go. So it's gonna have a black outline and I can control the thickness of that outline using this button right there, okay? So I'm pretty happy with how the shirt's coming along. Um, I wanna give him an accessory here. I think I'm gonna try to give him a little camera since I'd typically be carrying a camera. Um, so let's work our way out here. I'm gonna do a camera strap and then I'll put the little camera down here. So we'll take pen tool, start up here where the shoulder would be, come down here and I'm gonna bend this line. 
to create a nice curve there. I'll cut off the anchor point, come up a little bit, come back up a little bit here, and curve it the same way. So I've got this curving across. And one of the nice things with vector art is, even though this curve isn't really perfect yet, uh, I can go back and change it, even after I connect the shape. If I take my white arrow, I can click on that curve, and I can grab this handle and pull it down to reshape it so that it's more of a natural curve there. That looks great. Um, all right, let's make this red. I'm going to fill it with kind of a dark red color and send it backwards. Control down arrow. I want to get it underneath the beard and you can see my pocket is now on top of there. So I'm going to send this backwards too until it goes behind the camera strap. Perfect. Okay. Now let's add the camera. So for that, I'm going to use the rectangle tool. I'm going to create a little camera body here. I'm going to take my sub select arrow and I'm going to round off these corners because my camera is not perfectly rectangular like that. I want to have some kind of curved corners like this. And let's go ahead and fill this in with like a dark, dark gray. And I'm going to try to copy a few of these shapes to make my camera. I've got the body of the camera here, but I'm going to take one of these off, shrink it down, and this can become the viewfinder at the top of the camera. Uh, I also want to make a little button for the shutter button there. So I'm going to take a copy of this and I'll shrink it down and I'll squish it up and I'll put that right there as my shutter button. Uh, now I'm going to do the lens. So I'll take a circle ellipse and I'll put a nice big perfect circle. I'm holding down shift so that I get a perfect circle here. And I'll make the inside of the lens, let's pick like a light blue, kind of a glassy look. There we go. I'm going to make a copy of this. Control C to copy. Control V pastes it. So you can see I've got a copy there. And I'm going to take this copy and shrink it down. Okay. And I can just tap it into place there a little bit. Let's make this one a slightly lighter blue, almost like a gray blue there. And then I'm going to do it one more time, copy, paste in front. I'm going to shrink it down. This will be the little opening in the center of the lens. Now let's make this one darker. I'm going to go down to like a dark blue there. Okay. Um, now I could add more detail to this, of course. I, I could pull another one of these copies here and I'll shrink it. Maybe there's like the hand grip of the camera. Let's make that one a little bit darker so you can see it. Perfect. And then of course I'm going to take this whole thing and group it. So I'm just going to drag over the top of all the shapes I just made, right click, make a group, and now my camera is one piece and I can reposition it here if I want to slant it a little bit hanging off the side. That'd be awesome. So you can see how I build this up. I still need to give him some legs and shoelaces and maybe a watch or a bracelet. Um, I want to add lots of detail so that my figure becomes really interesting. Now, one other thing that you're going to be doing on this project is adding some um, effects to it. And effects can take a couple different forms. They can be shadows, they can be outlines, they can be patterns that you fill it in with. So I want to show you how to do a couple of those things. What I'm going to do first is apply a shadow to the eyes, because this is looking really, really flat. So what I'm going to do is grab this eye right here, and you notice as soon as I select it, over on this side I get some effects options. And one of them is drop shadow. So if I click, click plus, it's going to add a short drop shadow underneath that eye so that it stands off of the background. And I can, of course, control that here. I can decide how dark I want it to be or how far away it goes. Um, but I'm just going to use the default for now. So I'll take this one. I'm going to do the same thing. Drop shadow. Click. And now I've got two little shadows behind my eyes. 
Um, I might also want to do that to the beard. So I'm going to take the beard there and give it a drop shadow just so it stands off of the shirt a little bit. Uh, I could also do the same thing for these collar pieces if I take both of those and add a drop shadow. So you can already see that this is making my character look a little bit more three-dimensional now. Um, I'll put one on my camera too, just so it stands off from the body a little bit. Great. Um, now, as far as the clothing goes, it is also very, very flat because it's just a solid color gray. So one thing I can do is add what's called a gradient. And by clicking on this sleeve, I can come over to the fill here and choose not a color fill, but a gradient fill. Okay, and there's a couple different types of gradient fills. I'll go over each of these here. A linear gradient uh, is a color that fades from one side to the other. So you can see here it fades from gray to black. Um, I don't want it to go all the way to black. So what I'm going to do is I'll move this handle right here. That's the gray end. And then on the black end, what I'm going to do is instead of choosing pure black, I'm just going to pick a darker gray. So something right around there. And that just gives it a little bit of roundness. We'll do the same on the body. Take the body fill, gradient fill, or sorry, linear gradient. And then I'm going to have it fade from gray on this side to a darker gray on this side. Okay. And you can see that that creates a little bit of depth here where there's like a shadow on this side of his body. Just be uh, careful that you're paying attention to the direction. You know, if the light is coming from this side, it will always be lighter gray on this side and darker gray on this side. So that will keep it consistent. Now that's a linear gradient. For round things, we're going to use a different type of gradient. This is called the radial gradient. Okay. And when I select radial gradient, instead of going from one side to the other, it goes from the middle outwards. So you can see that here, the center of the circle is light gray and the outer side is black. So let's change that. I want the outside to be kind of a dark gray and I want the inside to be a slightly lighter gray. And I can pull on these handles to change the shape of that and decide how far out I want that to go. So you can see now this gives me a shadow on the bottom of my beard, but it's nice and bright here at the top, and that looks a little bit more realistic. It matches the roundness of my head. Um, you can do this for any of the body parts, by the way, too. We could come up to the head and do the same thing. We'll go here. We'll go to radial gradient. Oops, I don't want it to go to black, so instead I'm going to take this end, and I'll choose that skin tone, which I pulled from the orange area. Let's go like right in here. And I want this one to get a little bit darker, so I'm going to pull it down towards the bottom here to get a slightly darker color. So the middle of the head will be nice and bright. The bottom of the head starts to get darker, and of course I can pull this to change the shape. Maybe we'll have it be brighter on this side and darker right there okay so already my character is looking really great I've got nice kind of roundness to the shadows here uh, some depth I'm adding my accessories in and then once I get them all done and all the body pieces are in there I still got to do legs and shoes but what I could do is just grab all of it and turn them into a group okay um, once you have your character done the other part of this assignment is going to be to create the environment that they're in so for my guy, I'm going to come over to the layers here. And you can see on this layer right now, these are all the different parts that I've put together on my guy. But I'm going to make a new layer. And I'm going to call this layer background. Okay, And I'm going to drag it underneath everything I've created so far. Okay, uh, I don't want to touch my character and accidentally mess them up. So I'm going to come over and I will lock it so that it can't be edited anymore. And then that way as I'm working, I'm only working down here on the background layer, okay? So let's see where my guy would be, probably in the classroom. So I'm gonna take my rectangle tool and I'm just gonna start building out this environment. So we'll make this his desk. 
And I'm going to work a little bit fast here, so bear with me. Uh, let's pick a nice brown color for the desk. I'll have to add his legs in later, but for now this works pretty good. Uh, and then we need to give it some legs, so I'm going to take my rectangle here and I'll pull out the bottom of the desk and take my sub select and round these corners off like that. Maybe move it up a little bit so it's underneath there. We'll go arrange send backward. Okay. And I can take this top. Uh, this could use a nice drop shadow. So we'll hit drop shadow so that it's overlapping it. And I'll change the body of the desk. I think the desk in my classroom is kind of a pale green. Maybe somewhere right around there. That looks good. I definitely have my computer monitor here somewhere. So I'm going to take the rectangle tool and I'll put in a little computer monitor. Let's make this a dark gray. And on the back of it, it's got the little computer monitor stand. So I'll put this right here and make it a little bit darker gray. And then on the table, it's got the feet of that. So I'll make a little small rectangle there. And again, go even darker gray on that one. Great. And let me go ahead and group this together. I'll take those three, control click, uh, make a group. There's one monitor. And of course, I got two. So I'm going to put this one over the top of it as well. Okay. Uh, if you want to go in and do some drop shadows here, this might be a good place to do it as well. I can double click this little stand. We'll add a drop shadow so that it stands off from the monitor that it's connected to. Go like that. And I could even do the monitor where it goes from a light gray to a dark gray. So I'll take this and I'll do gradient. And this time I want it to go from the top to the bottom like that so it gets darker at the top or i'm sorry darker at the bottom lighter at the top and we'll do the same to this guy probably should have done this first but let's take this shape maybe there we go and then we'll go here linear gradient and again from top down like that all right, uh, what else would I have in my room? Well, in the background, I got my whiteboards. So I'm gonna go back to that background layer, make sure it's unlocked. And let's make the whiteboards. So this whiteboard's gonna go back here and I'll make a copy of that one, pull them over, put them right here. Doot, doot, doot. And then it's got the little dry erase board here, so I'm going to copy it, paste it, shrink it down. Let's make that one filled with black. Okay. Uh, let's see what else. I'm going to need to give my desk some legs here, but I'll get to that in a second. On my whiteboard, maybe I could put my message here. I can use the text tool. I'll take text, and let's come over and let's find a font that looks like handwriting. So I'm going to look for one that's got kind of a brush effect to it. And I'll click right there and I'll say, welcome to Mr. Roper's room. Okay. And I'll put some space in there. Boom. And if I take my selection tool, I can grab this text and resize it to whatever I want. So I can move this up a little bit. Let's come over to the preferences here. And there's my sizing. And let's push this up. Ooh, too big. Let's try 48. Nope, still too big. 36. There we go. Perfect. Okay. Uh, I'm going to do some colored walls in the background. Maybe put this back here. Uh, let's fill it in with... I've got kind of weird color walls in my classroom. Let's go with like a darker brown there. And we're going to make sure that this is all the way in the back. Arrange, send to the back, all the way to the bottom of my stack here. Uh, how about a clock? Pop this up. 
wall clock filled with white and it's got a border that's in black but let's make it a little bit thicker I'm going to change this to six point there we go and then I'll zoom in and let's draw a little arrow here there's the minute hand make it a little bit thicker how about three and then we'll take the pen tool again and we'll go here and do a little short hour hand all right this is shaping up pretty good and i'm really happy with some of the results i'm getting here so hopefully that gives you lots of ideas with what you can do to make your animated character convincing realistic that has lots of depth, lots of color, a lot of details, and you'll end up with something you can be really proud of. All right? Good luck, guys, and we'll see your work soon.